Right guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to make a ruined temple. So guys, ruined temple uh, for the mortal gods board build. This upcoming couple of weeks is going to be everything to do with this board. I'm also going to be showing you how to make some lovely water effects and I'm also going to be taking you through how to do oceans which has been a big scary thing for me which I've never done before um, and I'm sure a lot of you will have already seen the pictures that I've posted up of my, of my work in progress shots. So all to come guys, really looking forward to these next what three weeks maybe. So let's get cracked on, this is going to be quite a long video because it's quite uh, quite a complex ruin build um, so yeah enjoy right guys so first of all we're gonna get some Gorilla Glue and uh, just glue down a piece of uh, EPVC foam or Foamex whatever you want to call it um, and that's just to make the back step um, we're not because it's the same length as the amount of squares that we're gonna be put down from her starts all right and then just put the same amount of glue across and then just press them in um, don't weigh them down because if you weigh them down um, they will be perfectly flat. I'm not wanting that so as the glue expands it will slightly lift them and move them with it being a ruin. Um, it's quite a good effect um, so that's why we left it just to dry naturally over the half hour or so um, and then you get an uneven um, surface and because uh, polyurethane glue turns to a foam underneath it's really hard, it's really robust um, but then there's going to be no loose flags or tiles or whatever you want to call them either. Right, now once you've worked that out, what we're going to do is fill the floor up. There's no point um, using the her start squares and wasting all that resin or plaster or whatever you're doing to make a, a tiled floor. Because um, so, it's going to be a ruin, so there's going to be rubble on it and everything else anyway. Uh, so what we're doing is cutting a piece of 5mm insulation foam, about £4 off eBay uh, for a 2 foot by 4 foot sheet. Okay, and then we glue that down with some polyurethane glue as we've done the rest. But we weigh this one down obviously because we want this quite flat because we're going to be working on top of it. Um, the modulation, everything will add once that's dry in about half hour to an hour's time. If you are using something like acetone to weigh it down, make sure the lid's on. Um, right now, for the pillars to stand on, we're using some more of the Herstart squares. Um, I'm going to put them in, uh, well, Wayne's going to put them in uh, boxes of four. Um, the reason Wayne's doing this is I'm allergic to polyurethane, um, so he's handling the glue and put, sticking them down for us. Um, and we, we've got them in the two at the front, we're going to put one in the middle and we're also going to put them down the sides. But the ones down the sides, we're not going to use these squares because they're going to be covered. The front I want to be quite okay, as in like the front steps at least on show, so it shows what it is under and round it. Um, but then there's no point wasting these. so. What we've done is just cut some 50 mil squares out of that EPVC and um, using the pillars and everything we're going to stick them down on top of them so they'll look like raised pillars. Um, now with the actual um, squares on the, the, the cut into the foam we've done that just to save on having to cast loads of other random squares up. As you can see with the squares of the PVC and everything um, it's just there, just we put in modelling compound over the top so there's no point wasting material. Um, we've used a few plaster ones as well um, that we've cut into places so we can chip them, um, like especially on that one on the, on the right in the middle. It's a plaster square so we can actually chip that and knock it if there's anything that's going to have fallen on it. And just think about it like that. Also with the, um, the pillars and Make sure that if you are doing a ruin that there's going to be some debris around it, like this bit off the cliff, and just dig it into the foam and we'll fix that all in place with compound later. Right, now I'm just planning it out um, so I can make sure that I get everything in place before I start texturing everything up and make sure that uh, I'm going to be completely happy with everything that I want. I'm just marking it all out, make sure that when I put some glue on this I put it back down in the place where it needs to be. Um, if you're wondering where the statue's from, the statue's from, I um, can't remember the name of the company now, Grand Manor. Um, so check them out if you want any statues and bits and pieces like that as well. I did purchase it. Um, it's not a sponsored video or anything. 
Now I'm just sticking this down with polyurethane, I'm not weighing it down again, um, I'm just leaving it as it is. Um, we're not going to stick the statue in because we're going to cut it up and chop it to pieces. Now I'm going to cut it down that line uh, with them using polyester resin um, for this model. It, it, it was quite a, a bitch to break. Um, so it took quite a while sawing through it so I do skip this point because I was sawing through with a razor saw. It did a very good job. Um, but getting it to get all the way through took me about 10-15 minutes. It would have been better to use a reciprocating saw than a hand saw. Uh, but it is possible with hand tools if that's all you've got. Once you've got that in bits, just make sure that you chip the edges. You don't want any clean edges. Uh, and we'll just go around damaging the entire model. Add in as much detail as you think it needs. Okay, That's one of these things that I can't really explain what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. I'm just looking at it and going... That'll look cool snipped, that'll look cool broken, and you just go along chipping the broken edges and damaging things like the like the corners and things like that. And then what we're doing to texture it, as I've done a video on this on the pillars, so if you do want to watch how I made the pillars and everything and texture them, that's uh, there's a, an actual video on that which I'll put in the description below. Uh, I'm just doing the exact same to this and uh, all the pillars and everything. Uh, so it all looks the same. I'm even doing it on the uh, the tiles of the floor. All that is in there is unsanded tile grout. It's very, very fine. Um, and it just makes everything look like sandstone. And it's just the reason I do it is just to add some texture uh, and make it look a bit more realistic. Everything's a bit smooth and a bit perfect. Um, so I just put this on to add the details. Once you've put that on with a primer um, and you just dust it off and then we'll seal that in place when we paint it. Alright guys, so that's how you texture everything up and make sure that everything's got a really nice realistic sandy tone, uh, sandstone texture rather than um, having a, a shiny plastic finish that's too smooth to be realistic. Okay, it just helps do it uh, and, and using tile grout is super fine and that's why it looks really good. You could use talc or bicarb, you could use anything fine if you don't have any tile grout. And as you can see, once that's dry, it sort of fills all them chipped areas and makes them look a bit rough as well. Uh, so it adds to the weathering process of all the damaging and everything else. And then I just repeat the process on all the tiles. Um, obviously, I can't take this off. Um, so what we're doing is we're just spraying the primer on and then throwing the... Uh, you know sprinkling the tile grout on this is very messy guys um so if you are doing this in the house make sure you've got some stuff down because tile grout can it, it, it dyes your hands it dyes everything it touches and it's so fine it just disappears into the atmosphere and you'll be picking it off your, your side for days um so just make sure you do put something down while you're while you're using it not your dog obviously um, then what we do while we've got that down and that's all drying in the primer, I'm just going to use polyurethane glue, uh, spray it with a bit of water and then we'll stick the statue down. Now the weight of the statue, more than enough to hold it uh, pretty flat, okay? And then dust it all off when, you, when, when it's dry um, and just make sure you wipe it up with a damp cloth. Uh, that's what I did. And to stick all the pillars down, I just use some more super glue. Um, I just put some super glue on the bottom. I did think about using polyurethane glue for this, um, but I'm, I, would, I wanted to get some bits done, um, so I, I rushed this bit. I put some super glue on all the pillars, and then I just give it a spray with activator to speed up the process, just so we could get onto the uh, um, the putting the uh, the muck compounds on, letting that dry, getting all the rubble and everything in place. So. Give that a spray with the activator, and give it a couple of minutes to completely set and then we'll crack on with the uh, rubbling process. Right, now we use some of my modelling compound. Uh, this is a product that I do sell in our store, so if you would like to check it out, all the links are in the drop in doodah box below. Um, this is my paper and plaster mix um, that I use for building up grounds. Uh, I use it for, obviously, especially on rubble piles because you don't want to be using loads of broken plaster. 
um, to get to the heights and pile it up. Use this to build up your pile and then you add the texture on top so you're using less product which makes it a lot lighter. Um, modeling compound is very very strong once it's set um, and it is quick drying so you don't have to put this on and leave it for days. You can put this on 10-20 minutes later you're working back on the model again. That's why I love it. Um, it, it influences speed so well um, so get that on just w water it down to a when you add your water to it just make sure it's like more of a, a paste uh, and then let's just start pruning it around everything where you want it um, this will be different depending on what sort of ruin you're going for mine's heavily ruined so all the roof and everything will be smashed up and more or less covering the entire ground of the model hence why we didn't bother going into too much detail putting flags and stones everywhere now one thing i will advise with modeling compound with it drying very quickly mix it in small batches you better mix in less than you need and more than you need because this goes off very quick um, like i said 10 to 20 minutes it does dry so mix enough is what you think would be enough to do in the model and use a small amount at a time that way you know you're not going to be wasting any okay now for pushing rub big bits of rubble in, uh, these bits that I'm putting in at the minute are just off a bit of fancy uh, dado rail that I've, we've chopped in half um, because they've got that sort of nice um, front to a temple look and they've just been cut down the middle. And all you do is you press them into the compound, you don't have to glue them or anything um, and then we're just moving the compound up to them and smoothing it in and that's enough to hold them in place. Uh, we are going to be sealing them things afterward as well so they're not going to come out guys, okay? It's like stone when it sets hard. So just start putting all your rubble and broken bits where you want it. Um, again, just think about what sort of damage will be happening. Like that's a broken pillar. It's fallen down onto the chipped part of the uh, uh, statue. Uh, and adding a bit of super glue just so it adheres to the resin. And then the rest of it will make it, will fix it in with all the modeling compound. Uh, sprayed it with a bit of activator just to speed it up so I can move on start putting all your rubble and bits and off cuts and everything else is like your main rubble uh, and then we'll do the smaller rubble pieces in a second after about 10 minutes um, 15 minutes ish uh, wet your fingers and start smoothing and blending all this in obviously it's going to be a rub it's going to be a rubble and everything underneath so you don't have to get this perfectly flat um, just any areas that need blending in so you've got like a nice line just make sure you blend that in well then get a big bag of broken plaster as in all the other paws and everything get a shake up break it up in small pieces and just chuck that on dry we haven't put any glue down or anything the reason for that is if i didn't like where it was i can move it but i've made this so it's playable now all that broken plaster is just laid on dry and now what we're doing i've got a box a, a, a tub of stones um these are quite small about six to eight mil uh, and then I throw that around dry um, where I want it as well. This is for like the, so we've got this cast down, like a really heavy cast stuff. And this is like this a mid range gravel and rubble. And we're just throwing that where it should be. Um, again, just, I can't explain where to put it. Just put it where you think it looks good. It's just so that the rocks and everything blend in with the rubble and it all sort of ties in and makes sense. Um, and that's all I'm doing really. From that, we had uh, some, uh, this is isopropanol, <laughs> sorry, I forgot what we were doing then. Uh, this is isopropanol, it's just um, to get rid of any water tension from when we seal it. Um, but I'm just spraying this down, so when I put the next fine uh, sand on, well, it's sand and tile grout mixed together is this. This is for like the really fine rubble. Um, and it helps blend in all the rubble and everything together, and it, it textures up some of them areas where there isn't any rubble okay so we just put the water down so that tile grout will start to go off when it hits it and it stops it from blowing around all over the place so as you can see any left uh, modeling compound just hides it and helps blend everything else in right now onto painting after sealing it's just had a couple of coats of watered down pva glue over all of it uh, this is a can from Montana Gold. I couldn't tell you what colour it is, but it's a brownie gold. Um, well, brownie, golden brown, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be the main primed coat all over. Do take this outside to do it. These cans are a really high acrylic and the dust from these is ridiculous. 
Um, so do do this outside. Uh, right above where I'm working is a massive window that's open and I am wearing a mask um, because they are terrible, these cans. So just make sure that you've, you take precautions when using it. Uh, this is my workshop so I can get away with using it in the house without the girlfriend going mental sometimes. <laughs> but make sure you give it a good liberal coat all over and that's how we're getting the base colours down. Sorry, my camera had a hissy fit, might be all the fumes, but I missed my spraying on like the ivory bone colour. Um, it's not bone and it's not ivory, it's in between. I think the can's called marble um, and I sprayed this from a distance. Um, I'm actually doing it now as well. Um, you can't see me doing it, you might be able to see, able to see my shadow moving slightly, but I'm just sort of catching and coating the, um, the pillars and all the rubble and everything to give it a nice overall tone. Next up we go to a, an ivory, like a, an off-white, and this is just for the tops of the pillars, um, aiming down. Um, as you can see I'm going in quite hard, but it's because we are going to be washing this model down as well. Uh, but we're spraying it like this, um, just so that the pillars and everything else have got a really nice, rich sandstone colour. It, it's very over the top at the moment, but we are going to be washing that down. And making sure everything ties in and looks great in a second which I'll show you how we make the wash I'll show you how we do everything like that now as you can see it's starting to look pretty cool that's your base colors down um, and it's starting to look quite nice as you can see it's a really big imposing building uh, well ruined building uh, and that's what I was going for it's, it's stuck down well and all I've done is sprayed that down with uh, it took two days to dry um, but it's had two coats of PVA glue on top of it and then we sprayed it uh, with the paint which helps but as you start working on top of this doing all your ground coverings and everything else it's going to get even more and more coverings of, of um, watered down PVA glue so it will eventually just go rock solid and not come off at all. Right so making the wash for the building as you can see there's um, quite a bit of matte medium in there um, this is just so it, it's, it becomes strong it acts as a varnish as well and then we're pouring plenty of water in there about a quarter of a pint uh, of water and then we're going to pour a, a liberal amount of uh, brown ink in there um, this is going to be washed all over uh, all the rubble all the pillars and everything else but make sure you give it a very good mix because uh, that matte medium does does need some good mixing in For Floyd, I'm just adding some isopropanol alcohol, which is a hundred, uh, well, 99.9% uh, alcohol, um, which really helps the uh, wash flow. And then the simple task of just washing it all over. As you can see it's very strong uh, but I'll show you how we deal with that in a second but with the ISO being in this over time it does gradually drop to, into all the recesses and down to the bottom. Um, isopropanol is an awesome flow aid. Just be careful with the certain inks and certain paints that you're using because uh, spirits can sometimes mess with the paint pigments uh, and make them go tacky and awful so if you're not sure about what you're using do test it first. As you can see that wash on the first pillow that we've done is starting to look awesome. It looks dark and then it just sort of dribbles down and runs down and that's, that's why I like using ISO for flow aids on terrain and stuff just well, well one because it's I've got it and I've always used ISO propanol for everything uh, but two it just does a great job. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually dabbing uh, just to get some inconsistencies uh, in, in the wash. I don't want it all to look the same. Um, so I'm tapping it off the pillars and the, st the actual stonework like the flags and everything. I'm leaving it more on the rubble um, because the rubble can be a little bit dark. I, want to sh I don't want it all to be the same colour. I know it would be uh, but it's nice so it, when you look at it, it breaks it up a bit. Probably not the most realistic thing about this model, but I want it so when you look at it, you can see the pillars, you can see every little bit. Um, now, the ground cover is a mix of uh, tile grout soil um, and some cement pigments. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't have to paint the sand. Uh, it does look very pale, but obviously once you put more glue and everything that you spray on this, it seals it down um, and it also darkens it up. And that helps blend it all in. Now, once you've got all your ground covers all over, wet that with isopropanol 
and then water down PVA glue, making sure that it's solid and firm. Uh, in, a, in a couple of hours, that will start to firm up lovely because the tail grout isn't adhesive, obviously. It's like a cement that hardens, uh, and this stuff's never going to come off. Uh, it takes a chill to knock this stuff off. It looks horrendous at the moment, as you can see, but as that dries, it lightens up lovely, and then we can get onto all the accents and details and dry brushing. Crafter's Choice, great acrylic paints from the works. I think they're about a pound each when they're on offer. You can get them cheaper than that if you buy them in the sets. And all I'm doing is I'm dry brushing all the rubble um, with cream, like a brownie cream first, um, just to give it more of a colour because it's still got that orangey, goldeny brown colour because I've not got as much uh, of the, the overspray up from the other cans on it. And obviously with the wash, it's made it look a bit goldeny brown still. So I'm dry brushing this up. One adds a bit more detail in. You can see a bit more colour transitions and everything else. While that brush is still covered in that paint, we add some white to that, okay? Um, and then mix it in. So obviously as you're mixing that in and then you're dry brushing it off, um, it's a nicer transition. You don't want it to go to a pure white. Pure white never looks good when you're dry brushing, unless you're doing a white model, for example. Uh, but you can see that just brings it up enough, um, not enough that, you know, it looks horrendous, but it's just a, a subtle highlight and that's what we're going for just so it all blends and ties together nicely. Slight different colour from the pillars, but overall it looks very similar. Right, as you can see, I've painted all the board uh, like a, a dark cream colour. I've also painted all around the rubble where I want the ground cover to be. Um, now, the reason I've painted it this colour is so when I put my ground cover over the top, it's got I know where I'm putting it for one, but two, it sort of gives a darker tone of the sand underneath. Um, so we've done this first, um, and then what we're doing is we're using tile grout and um, soil mix with the cement dyes in which gives it a really nice pale light sand colour as you can see and all I'm doing is I'm copying where I've painted it now this is all around the front all around the sides this board's going to be absolutely covered in this stuff because obviously it's a very fine sand um, well it's not sand it's soil and grouts but it's a lot finer than sand uh, so it scales far better uh, sand on a on a board this size doesn't look like sand um, so when you're working at 28 mil guys do take into account that sand doesn't look great for sand um hence why a lot of people paint it using this technique using grouts soils and and uh, uh cement dyes to get the color it gives you a very very natural looking sand covering that you don't have to paint and the glue naturally shades it in the areas where more glue resides when you spray it so just make sure that you put all this all over where it needs to be and then we'll seal that down and everything in a second. Now once you've got that on, we have put it on dry because we are going to be sealing it later. The reason we've put this on dry is so if it goes on anything that you don't want it on, for example the pillars, any of the rubble you think you don't want any sand on, you can brush it off. That's the only reason why I put this stuff down dry and you can get away with putting this stuff down dry because it's a grout, it's, um, you know, it's, a, it's an adhesive. Um, and when you spray that with the glue, it sticks. So don't worry about it at all. Um, you, people are used to putting glue down first, then the coverings, and then... It is sometimes better to put glue down first, especially in big open areas. But around rubble and stuff where things are not going to be getting knocked as often, um, you can get away with just sprinkling it on dry, brushing it off everything you don't want, and then sealing it down. Alright, so I hope that answers a couple of questions about using this stuff around rubbly areas and getting your nice realistic ground covers. Zoomed in like this, it does look a bit obnoxious, uh, but we are extremely close at this point. Um, so once that's dry, uh, you'll see what it looks like. Right, so then spray that with uh, your ISO and watered down PVA glue um, and this will lock it and seal it in place. A um, couple of hours we'll be ready for putting some tufts and other detailings on. Um, so yeah, once you've got that done, we'll move on to the next step. 
when it's all dry that's what it's going to look like now we're going to be using some of the new uh, Luke's APS Swamp 10mm Tufts models are getting bigger scales are getting bigger so why not scenics and we've brought out a full range of 10 millimeter tufts so it looks far better and in scale as you can see lovely full tufts the reason we're using the swamp tufts for this is because the the, the long towards the end of the grass it becomes like a deader uh, sort of wiry looking grass and i like that for tufts in in the recesses so that's why i've chose them there is over 30 ranges guys so do go check them out on the website now for placing these in, I'm only putting them in areas where there's like recesses where water would be. I'm not going to go mega over the top at placing them because um, I am going to be doing some static grass and stuff on this board later as well. Uh, but again, I'm not going to go mental with that. I want it still to be quite arid and Mediterranean looking. Um, so just put them in the recesses. They are, these are self-adhesive, but once I've finished the board, I will be spraying it with watered down PVA glue and everything again, which will lock them and fit them in place permanently. This is just zoomed in so you can see how easy they go down. Uh, and that's two that are stuck together and then just press them down into place and then we'll fix them with the uh, spray glue later. And that's it finished guys. Um, overall, a very simple build. It did take quite a while to build and sort it all out. Uh, it took me about a day's work in total to do it with painting. Um, it with the drying times because the only thing with rubble and things like this is making sure that you've got enough glue on there and getting enough things down to make sure that that's not going to come off at all. Another good tip is you can just use liquid super glue over the whole thing as in literally run it over it all and that also holds it in place as well. So, thanks for watching guys, thanks for tuning in, uh, and I'll see you at the end. So what do you think guys? Um, I'm very happy with it. Um, I mean, the tufts, they really do help separate it and break it up. It did look okay on its own, uh, but adding a bit of colour sometimes just makes that difference. And for me, I, I do like it, alright? Thanks for watching this video guys. I know a lot of you have been waiting for it and asking for it, and it's been a lovely build. Um... It's not completely finished yet. I've still got some static grass and the trees to finish off and mount in place, which I should have done before the, the, the video's finished, should I say. Um, but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support over the last uh, few weeks. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, it's really helped me out because things are getting really hard at the moment. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Um, if you'd like to support the channel or buy any of my scenics, the base readies, anything used in this video like my modelling compound etc, links are below to my store. If there's anything else there while you're there just browsing, pop it in your basket. Cheers guys and I'll, uh, I'll see you again on Thursday. Don't know what video I'm going to post, it depends on which one I get edited. In a bit.